because I thought since I got such a well response from making my pumpkin cupcakes, I would go ahead and make some of my other favorites, which are peanut butter, uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. So um, I will go ahead and get started. Starting from left to right, you'll need brown sugar, unsalted butter, a half a cup or one stick, Reese's miniature peanut butter cups, individually wrapped, salt, pure vanilla extract, flour, sugar, baking soda, and your favorite peanut butter. Mine was Skippy. The first thing is, is this is one of those easier recipes regarding that all you have to do is throw it all in at one time, mix it together, and then continue on versus doing wet and dry ingredients. So we will start with a half a cup of peanut butter. And I'm using Skippy because that's really tasty. Here's my half cup measuring. Oh, and before I even get started, let me turn the oven on. 350 is the temperature to have it in. All right. So I'm gonna fill up my half cup measuring cup with peanut butter. Now this one batch will yield approximately oh, 24 cookies-ish. Kinda just depends. And you'll probably want, you'll probably use what's best with baking is that I use the um, mini cupcake pan. So I have one here and what I do is once I get to the stage where I'm ready to put the cookies on that in that pan, I'll show you what I'm talking about, but I roll them in balls and then I'm going to go ahead and put them on that mini cupcake pan and it's just going to be really slick. So it's going to be a really easy transition to put it in the oven and then also to put my Reese's peanut butter cups in each individual cookie slot after it's done cooking. Baking. Baking. Alright, so here's a half a cup of peanut butter. Put it into my mixing bowl. And the next ingredient is a half a cup of softened butter, which I already have here, and I've softened it. Then I'm going to need a half a cup of brown sugar. Now because that measuring cup is already full of peanut butter, I'm just going to grab my other measuring cup for half a cup of brown sugar. I gotta say, I was always like 100% chocolate lover. Let me take that back. I'm still 100% chocolate lover. However, my mother-in-law told me once that her favorite kind of fudge and desserts always have something to do with peanut butter in them. The next ingredient is a half a cup of sugar, white sugar. And so I have, I used to think no way you know, peanut butter is great of itself, but in the fudge and desserts, I don't think so. So, um, I never really gave it a good try until I had this recipe and now I am in love with the combination of peanut butter and chocolate. It's amazing. So I have a half a cup of sugar and then I need one and a quarter cup of flour and I just use white flour. That's what I grew up on. I don't really know any other flour, nor do I want to try any at this point. I'm probably missing, I'm probably putting a lot more in here than I need to, but I'm gonna eyeball that. This is another quarter cup. Again, a long time ago I used to be very specific and very exact with all of my baking and measuring and leveling and if that back in the day I probably would have even that off with like a knife the back of a um, butter knife but now I'm kind of like hmm, I'm just gonna guess I'm not gonna be super anal about that kind of thing and then the next ingredient is a half a teaspoon of salt so I have my half a teaspoon measure, Here's my salt, and 
And then I need a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla I'm a little bit more easy going on. Usually use a full cap, which I tried to measure this out once and I don't even know exactly where that comes out to being. It could be more than a teaspoon, but that's what I like. And then I know I needed a half a teaspoon, but it's all right. And then I need three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So I have a quarter teaspoon measure here and I'm gonna get three of them. There we go. And one egg. I forgot to put that in my list of ingredients earlier, but yes, one egg. And at room temperature is best. This is just a basic peanut butter cookie recipe. And you will eventually add the Reese's peanut butter cups to this recipe after it's done baking. So while it's in the oven baking, I'm going to unwrap those peanut butter cups. That can take a while. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix it and I'll see you back here when I'm done. Make sure halfway through that you go through and you start scraping the sides of the inside of the bowl. That way, no crummy residue is on the very bottom. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray my pan, uh, my mini cupcake muffin pan, uh, with just a vegetable spray or a pan or whatever you have available. That's just going to prevent the cookies from sticking to the pan. And I've got my batter here. So what we're going to do is get kind of messy. I'm going to go ahead and take my watch off and we're going to be making about one tablespoon, one teaspoon, just kind of depends, you got to eyeball it, a uh, round size ball and you're going to just drop it into each muffin pan. Some people probably would chill this dough at this level or this consistency at this point, but I'm not going to. Then, and you can kind of see, I'm just eyeballing it, but um, just kind of making like one inch a one inch ball or so a one inch ball or so okay we have them all filled and after reassessing the amount of cookie dough left that I have I'm thinking that this is probably going to make closer to maybe 36 cookies versus 48. So just be aware of that and then also be aware that um, we're going to be putting them into the oven at 350, 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes or until they get brown. Perfect. We don't want them overcooked because um, it's just depends on your taste, your preference, but I prefer a softer cookie. So I'm going to put this in the oven and when they're done cooking I'll be back to show you how to go ahead and add your Reese's Minute miniature peanut butter cups. Alright, so I just took the cookies out of the oven and they look beautiful. They look brown. So we're obviously going to be putting um, some of the Reese's peanut butter cups in the middle of each one of these. So the best time to do it is right after it gets out of the oven. That way the pieces don't melt while they're cooking and that way they don't ruin the cookie more after they've cooled longer. So I will show you how to do it. We just go ahead and push right into the center. And you want them all to be around the same height. So if you push down far enough, then they kind of even out in size. But what's great about this method using this cupcake pan is that they're all uniform in size and um, that way you don't get too much peanut butter cookie and not enough Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> all right. To me it's all about the ratio, making sure that you have the right amount of chocolate and peanut butter for each bite. So after we go through and put all of these in, then we're going to go ahead and start taking them out of the pan so they don't overcook in the pan. That part can be kind of tricky, making sure that you don't ruin any of the cooking. 
That's why we greased the pan before we started in hopes that it would come out, pop out easy. All right, they're all in place. So I took a paper bag and I cut it open and I laid it here on the counter. That was, that's what we're going to transfer with these two. We're going to grab a fork. That's going to be helpful to kind of help loosen these up. I'm going to go all the way around the cookie. I don't want to loosen up very well. But that's what our hope is, is that we can take it out in one full piece. Now, if you have any other suggestions on how this is better done as far as how to get them out of the cookie pan, or the cupcake pan better, I'm all ears. All right, and there you have it. This is the end result. It's a beautiful peanut butter golden brown cookie, and in the middle is a beautiful soft center of the um, Bruce's peanut butter cups, and they are so tasty. I bet you can't just eat one cookie. They're that good. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you subscribe and like this video. And we will see you next time.